Guys, in this video we'll tell you about everything you need to know about the new Genshin endgame mode, the Imaginarium Theater, and how you should prepare for it in terms of characters. Let's get straight into it. So first of all, how is the mode structured? In terms of the enemies we get to fight, it's not too different from the Abyss. In fact, at its core, it's something where you select characters and then you get to fight enemies in different stages. For most of these stages, if you defeat all the opponents within a certain time limit, you will get a star, which just like Abyss stars, will enable you to get the rewards for the mode. So, in terms of the challenges you have to face, it's not too different from what we currently have in the game, but what intrigues me about this mode is how it destroys the idea of picking a fixed team to beat these challenges. The whole peculiarity of it comes from the character selection. To enter this mode, you don't get to choose teams, you get to choose characters, which is a big difference. At the start, you're forced to select 6 specific characters. These are characters you have to pick no matter what, and if you don't have them, the game will provide you with trial versions of them. All of these characters follow the main rule of the mode, which is only 3 specific elements are allowed. This is already a big restriction for team compositions, because for example, for this cycle there is no Hydro, and since Hydro happens to be a staple in most teams in the game, it's quite the limitation. Still, the elements that are present right now, so Pyro, Electro and Animo, allow for pretty interesting synergies, so it's not a huge problem. What's more interesting is how the trial characters look like. At a glance it might seem like they have okay builds, but there are some puzzling choices here. For example, Arlecchino's weapon is Ballado de Fjords, a weapon whose passive gives elemental mastery. Arlecchino only needs elemental mastery on vape or melt teams, so teams where she gets to trigger vaporides or melt reactions. But of course, those are not doable without Hydro or Cryo characters. On the other hand, the trial version of Wanderer gets Widset as a weapon, which is actually his best 4 star option. So it's kinda hit or miss. After you pick the 6 characters, you get to pick additional characters from your own box. These characters need to follow the same elemental rules the other 6 had to follow, excluding for 4 special selections. These characters are basically jollies, because they have elements that are different from the predetermined ones, but they can still be used. The 4 extra characters of this cycle, Althaitam, Baiju, Brinsley and Sijuin, are actually pretty smart choices because they have good synergy with the other elements. For example, Althaitam and Baiju can make pretty good quicken teams with Electro characters, Brinsley can make male teams with Pyro characters, Sijuin is there, I guess? But yeah, uh, if you have these characters it can diversify your options. Anyway, there is also another jolly. One of the characters you can pick can be from one of your friends. In fact, people can set up to 6 characters as supports for this mode. One of these supports can be selected by a person in your friend list and be used in the teeter mode. This is pretty busted if you think about it, because uh, if you have a whale friend then you can just select his whale character and steamroll the opposition with him. But there are a few limitations here. The first one is that when you enter the mode you'll only be able to use the starting characters, so the 6 characters you get to choose at the start. The second is that characters have a certain amount of vigor which represents the amount of times these characters can be used in the mode. The starting amount is of 2, so each character can only be used 2 times in the whole mode as a baseline. But let's go step by step. At the start you only get to use the 6 obligatory characters, and this is what I meant when I said that you don't get to choose teams in this mode. In fact, the additional characters you also picked will be available, but in a randomic way. The way it works, as you progress in the mode and beat the stages, you will be able to get these characters in two different ways. The first is that by clearing some stages, one of the characters will just be added to your selectable pool. The second is that by clearing the stage, you'll also be presented with a set of rewards you can choose. These rewards can be exchanged for a currency that, again, can be gained by clearing stages. Oof, am I repetitive today, man? These rewards can be of different types, for example buffs to your team, but they can also make you claim the additional characters. These however are still pretty random, because they can be something like uh, get a random pyro character, get a random electro character, and so on. So what I'm getting at is that you'll never have the certainty to be able to make the team that you actually want to make. Let's say you have Arlecchino from the start and you want to make the Arlecchino Monopyro team with Kazua, Shelling and Bennett. For this to actually happen you have to be lucky and get those 3 characters from the random pool. So instead of being a mode that rewards people with strong specific teams, it rewards people that have characters that can be strong even when they aren't in their ideal team scenario. 
Additionally, the bigger thing rewards people that have a large amount of strong, usable characters. So, if you think about it, while the challenges themselves are not too different from the ones you'll face in the Abyss, the way this mode wants you to play the game is the total opposite. In the Abyss, if you have two strong teams, or even just two strong characters, you're basically set, but clearly that's not what's going on in the Tether mode. Now, talking about the enemies you'll face in this mode, as I said earlier, there are multiple stages. The amount of these stages vary depending on the difficulty you've chosen at the start. The highest difficulty has 8 stages in total, 3 of which are boss challenges, which would be the main ones. These enemies are in general considerably weaker than in the Abyss because they have lower HP. That's because the HP multiplier of enemies in this mode is much lower than in the Abyss, and as a result the final boss of the Teeter has the same HP as a Chamber 1 boss in the Abyss. This is understandable because, again, in this mode you can't always make your ideal teams. These stages can have special effects, some of which can be pretty annoying. For example, one of those will continuously deplete your character's HP. To counterbalance this, your characters can also receive buffs in the form of boons, so the rewards I mentioned earlier that you can exchange with the Tether currency. These buffs can be quite significant and can push you towards a certain playstyle instead of another, so I think it would be interesting. The strategy side of it is also intriguing, because you can either pick the buffs or an additional character, and this just makes the whole thing pretty interactive. People are already calling this mode easy compared to the Abyss because of the lower HPs the enemies will have, but honestly, I believe that considering the handicap we'll have, it will be pretty balanced. So now let's see what some strategies and the teams for the teeter could look like. Let me remind you that if you enjoy my content but you haven't subbed yet, please consider doing so because it really makes me notice your support. In terms of what the best characters are for the new teeter mode, I think the best way to tackle this issue is seeing what the most self-sufficient characters are in general. Since we don't just get to make the most ideal teams, we want characters that do very well even when they're alone or with just one good teammate. For this scenario, I calculated the solo damage of some DPS just to provide you with some perspective. It's not every character, but it's just to give you the idea. Characters like Arlecchino that do very well by themselves and don't need specific teammates are performing quite nicely in this scenario. In while characters like Huta that need specific teams like uh, big teams to do well, or characters like Linnae that have passives that specifically benefit from having a particular teammates on his team are kind of struggling here. Also, characters that only need one teammate to become strong should also be good choices. For example, Wanderer gets massive boost from Ferrazan and they're both available as trial characters at the start. I'm assuming that's not a cost edition 6 Ferrazan, and even if it isn't, that duo should be quite functional in the first few stages of the mode. So, a possible strategy to start off will be using the Tile Wonder, Ferrazan, and Toma for the first two stages, and in the meantime get new playable characters through the rewards. This way, ideally, you should be able to make a good team for the first boss and then proceed further. It's honestly also sort of incentivized to use Wonder at the start, because the final boss of this mode is Copilius, who has very high Ganymo resistance, so Wonder wouldn't do very well there. Anyway, your character selection could also depend from which of the starter characters you have. For example, if you have both Arlecchino and Chlorine built on your account, you could think of using them as your staples for the big fights and filling the additional slots with a more supportive lineup. So, characters like Fischl, Shaling, Bennett, Kazua, Sucrose, Chevreuse, to maximize your chances of getting good characters for those two staples. On the flip side, if you don't have those characters, you could think of filling those slots with more DPS characters to increase your chances of getting a good carry before the boss fight. Besides this, the team restrictions are also interesting because of what they mean for your character builds. For example, in absence of somebody else that can hold the deep food set on the team, that set actually becomes the best choice for Alheita. And since that exact scenario will likely occur in the theater, you will have to make that change. So, I really like how this mode can change how we approach the game. In that sense, in my opinion, it's a pretty clever puzzle. And since it will alternate with the Abyss in terms of period, I really wonder what ramifications it will have in terms of meta. I'm really curious about that. And I'm done for today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe and also go check the Chlorine guide I made a few days ago. Bye bye.